Once upon a time, there was a flock of seagulls. Now these seagulls were hungry all the time, for they didn't live on a tourist beach where people threw bread and used ice cream cones at them nonstop. They lived in one of those beaches that no one reads about in those magazines no one's ever heard of. Now, these seagulls were governed by a republic, but they did have a mayor-like figure that they elected at the end of each seagull season, which, as we all know, is the first of fall. Anyways, so their lead seagull was named Balthazar, and Balthazar, the emperor of seagulls, the emperor of this republic of seagulls, was, um, well, you see, Balthazar, he was determined to find them a food source that they could stick by and use. Now, Balthazar searched high and low. Not really low so much, because seagulls like to fly very often, but he searched high all over the place, searching for things to eat. At one point, he got so desperate, and I'm sure the hallucinations from lack of eating didn't help, that he tried to spin the clouds as if they were a cotton candy machine, his for the taking. Now, Balthazar almost died this way, for, you see, those those high-up clouds, they really, they really get to you with the, the speeding winds and the airplanes all around, and, and it's very cold up there in those clouds. But Balthazar didn't know any better at the time, so he tried, and lo and behold, he fell. He awoke later, about a week later, in a sewer system, being nursed by rats. Now, this was very alarming to him, for he did not know how he got into this sewer system. Last thing he remembers was almost getting to those cotton candy clouds before passing out. So, he demanded to know what was going on, and, lo and behold, King of the Rats, Sassafras, the Rat King, came up to him and said, Mighty Balthazar, we notice you are looking for food. Well, we here in the sewer have abundant food, but it's not the most pleasant tasting. So we will strike a proposition with you. If you, mighty Balthazar, can find us seasoning for our food, we will share our old discarded pretzels from the nearby pretzel factory with you. For we have quite a bunch. I mean, they just throw these pretzels out like there's no pretzel tomorrow, if you know what I mean. Now, Balthazar did not know what he meant, but he decided to agree with Sassafras's demands and promised he would return with a spice of mighty spice proportion. So, off Balthazar flew. Of course, he didn't know where he was at the time, and he was very disoriented. So, he just flew north, hoping that that would take him to his beach with all his seal friends and subordinates. Now, he eventually found his seagull friends and subordinates, but only after passing out two or three more times. The first time, he was nursed back to health by the rats once more. The second time, a cat found him and rode him on its back for an hour or so before he regained consciousness. He didn't know what that was about, but off he went, you know, before the rat could... I'm sorry, the cat, not the rat. Before the cat could finish him off. Anyways, so... He got back to his seagull friends and said, Seagull friends, slash subordinates, we must find spices upon spices. Sassafras, the mighty rat king, demands it. Now, Sassafras, the mighty rat king, was secretly plotting to betray Balthazar, but he didn't let him know this. So, Balthazar sent out search parties with his seagull brethren to search for spices all throughout the land. Well... They had very, very, very little success. Now, being traitorous seagulls as they are, they decided to bottle sand and call it a spice. What the name for the spice was? Well, I'm sure you're all curious as to what that could be, and I will tell you what that spice could possibly have been named that looked like sand and was bottled. It was called... Um... Umsund. Yes, Umsund. They bottled Umsund, and they 
brought it back to Sassafras, King of the Rats. Now, Sassafras, King of the Rats, was no fool. However, he was reluctant not to believe them because he was really hoping to get spices. So, he brought it to them and, lo and behold, the rats turned on them. They brought out their mighty rat spears and their tiny, adorable rat helmets. And they were like, hey, you're our prisoners now. Now Balthazar was shocked at the betrayal of these foolish rats. For you see, seagulls are bloodthirsty by nature, and he had been holding in his bloodlust in the presence of mighty Sassafras simply as a diplomatic means to an end. But this terrible betrayal has forced Balthazar's hand. So with a quick peck, he pecked out the eyes of Sassafras the Mighty. Now, Sassafras, blinded by the light. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, he was just blinded by the, um, the pecking of the eyes, not the light. But anyways, um, Sassafras recoiled in fear, anger, and pain and said, How dare ye! Now the pretzels will be lost to you forever. But, I mean, the pretzels were right there next to him, so it was kind of an empty bluff. So, after Balthazar and his seagull brethren killed and ate and finished off the rats and used their bones to decorate the sewer systems, after all that was done, Balthazar sat back and enjoyed the luxuries of pretzels. And the pretzels kept coming because humans keep making pretzels that just are shaped oddly, so, you know, they had no need for the pretzels because no one wants to buy a misshaped pretzel, so they would just throw it down into the sewer system, and it would constantly be replenished. So, that is the story of how the seagulls took to the sewer systems and lived a fine life in luxurious pretzel-slash-rat-skull-in-sewers. The end. Tune in next week to hear the tale of how Balthazar's cousin found out how to start a traveling electric violin band in the sky. And he would play for, for change. But that's another story for another time, so tune in next time for that.